so here I am. Uh, this is the ladybug. It was sent to me by a friend. And uh, just in case you don't know, the difference between ladybug and uh, the Louette that I have is that the ladybug is a scotch tension. It can also be in double drive. And so that instead of making my adjustments mostly, well, I was just going to say I had better control over um, the amount of uptake I have on the wheel. The bobbin lead wheels are adjusted by the brake band and they tend to have a lot of pull, which is complicated when you're doing thinner yarns and like slicker fibers. Uh, in this case, I have an adjustment for the brake band uh, on the bobbin here and an adjustment for the whirl. And this is not the high speed whirl um, on the ladybug. There's actually a high speed whirl back behind here. And you know, I've kind of gotten accustomed to not really using the high speed whirl. So I'm okay. Um, I'll use it for silk. I don't really need to use it for angora. But anyway, I'm not getting as much uptake as I do on the, the bobbin lad louette. So I'm not lacing the flyer like I would if I was using the louette. So here we go. And I'm really liking the staple length. This is about four inches or so for the Angora. And at some point, I'll finish the Angora video um, for my Fab Fiber. And one of the things that I want to talk about is the crimp. Because people like to say that Angora has no memory. And which is not completely true. Crimp is part of the equation for memory. And so Angora has crimp. It definitely has crimp. And it's part of the breed standard to have crimpy fiber. The more crimp you have, the better wool you have on the Angora. So Angora should never be without crimp. And also a lot of times it's uh, said in some of the books, one of my favorite fiber books uh, the author says that Angora is a short fiber and I'm like oh no it should not be uh, in that case merino would be a short fiber because the minimum staple length that is supposed to be on an Angora is three inches that's the minimum three to five inches is the range generally and there are quite a few breeders like myself who have non-molting Angoras and sometimes the fiber is six plus inches. And so Merino's only three inches. So if Angora's a short wool, Merino would be too. And so that, that short wool thing is incorrect. I think what may have happened in the past was um, people were clipping their Angoras, who should not have been clipped, and they, they had a three inch staple clipped, and maybe it was two and a half when they got done or something. I don't know, I'm just speculating. But what I'm saying is that uh, this is not a short, fiber it should not be a lot of times I can't blend my uh, Angora with uh, some of the finer fibers because they're a whole lot shorter than the staple length and I'm not going to cut the staple length so anyway uh, sorry about my Angora crusade but uh, if you watch my channel you know one of the things I'm all about and what got me started making videos is the love of Angora and a lot of confusion and lack of information about how to utilize the fiber okay so here I go we're going in. I have very little resistance. I almost always spin with a worsted short forward draw or short backward straw. I just tend to like my fiber worsted. And I'm pinching it, letting a, a little travel into the drafting zone. Uh, if you've noticed, I haven't carded my fiber. I almost never do. Not unless I make a mess of it or it's shorter than I like it. And so I'm spinning from the tips. Occasionally I spin from the fold. And generally I spin from the fold when uh, I've plucked it or clipped it and kind of thrown it in a bag and it's a bit of a mess. And so I'll spin from the fold. But if it's plucked properly or if I clip it and lay it in you know, straight chunks like this. I can just pretty much spin from the tip. Also spin short angora from the fold. 
but in general I just try to avoid short angora because I don't like short fibers so. and I'm particularly close to the orifice today just because of my room setup I have the loom out behind me and a table for making cards so I don't have a lot of space in the room there's not a lot of room for me to move my chair back. Usually I would draft a lot further away from the orifice. And there's Pepper right on cue. Hi Pepper. Remember that when you're spinning Angora, it needs a lot of twists. And I could use the high speed whirl. I could also treadle faster. Or in this case, I just pinch the fiber until the twist builds up and then release it into the drafting zone. Okay, we'll stop. Have a look. It's not too bad at all. All right, I'll let you know when I'm done. I'm almost there. So I'm all done here. Didn't take me very long. And here we have 120 yards of Angora. You can see how it hangs. Uh, unfortunately, I could not find my scale anywhere from bunny clipping last week, but I'd say there's no more than an ounce or so here. Not much more than that. With this camera, you can't see the halo as well. Um, it's going to be a very soft halo, and a lot of times people say that English doesn't have as much halo as the other uh, breeds because it has less guard hairs and that's not true it just has softer guard hairs the, the guard hairs are thinner in diameter and so they're softer English should have good guard hairs if it doesn't you're gonna have a coat that mats up um, with a little use because I'm a worsted spinner and this is like a, a tight two plied worsted and the fiber is longer uh, the guard hairs are kind of tucked in there, but as I begin to um, use the fiber, and you know it, it gets full, or uh, I should say, it gets finished in the wash, you'll, you'll be able to see the halo from the fiber begin to come out. You can just kind of see it on the edge right there. And if I get this skein uh, used up anytime soon. I'll make another video on uh, what it's turned into. Thanks a lot.